Hey, I've been gone for a while. I was at a fantastic medical conference in California last week, so I didn't post anything. I can't wait to share about that with you. But today I want to hop on real quick just to do something real fast about pediatric sepsis. It has been, this past week has been Pediatric Sepsis Awareness Week, but this information applies to adults too. want to get bogged down discussing uh, the protocols, the new protocols that are in place in the ER and the ICU. What's the definition of sepsis? It is the body's uh, overwhelming and life-threatening response to an infection. The infection can be bacterial, it could be a skin infection. It could be a cut or a bug bite. It could be an infection in the urinary tract, a simple UTI that goes into the kidneys like pyelonephritis. That can turn into sepsis. Um, viruses, you start with viral meningitis or bacterial meningitis or COVID-19. Even pneumonia, lots of things can turn into sepsis. Sepsis is very um, uh, rapid illness. So knowing what some of those symptoms are could mean life or death for people or could mean disability or not once they recover from sepsis. Pediatric sepsis, that it is considered still over cancer and other illnesses, the leading cause of death in children worldwide. And the current statistic I just pulled up today uh, and I'll list where I pulled this information up from, is that 3 million children worldwide die of sepsis each year. In the United States, 40,000 a year are diagnosed with it and 4,000 die from it. 12 kids a day die. Now, when I looked at um, one other area of research, it said 18 kids a day die from sepsis. So it is a very serious illness and it has to be um, brought to the attention of a provider uh, in emergency room doctor as soon as possible. So what do you look for? What you look for in sepsis can mimic other things. So it's okay to go in. I'm not sure if this is sepsis or not. Is this the flu? It can um, look the same. So if your child is very lethargic, overly sleepy, difficult to arouse, there might be a seizure, there's a fever, cold, clammy skin, um, decreased appetite, decreased urine output, vomiting, diarrhea, those are some things that um, are a sign that it's sepsis. But this um, really sick kid, looking really sick child, just trust your gut. My child is not the same. So lethargic, not eating this fever. And now we've got this skin rash. So I'll try to insert some pictures. I'll find some that are freebies that I can insert here for educational purposes. But it's a real distinct rash, mottled skin, and it can be purpley in color. It can turn black. And then um, when sepsis progresses, uh, those children end up with amputations of their limbs, usually hands and feet. You often can see it too in the nose or somewhere in the face. Sepsis can, I think I mentioned that it can be bacterial, viral, and what some of those things are, but it also can be fungal infections and parasitic infections as well. When you take your child into the ER, or if you call 911 because your child has become very ill and you're worried about this, they will initiate a sepsis protocol in the ER. If your child is very ill on the floor or in the ICU, the providers, the uh, doctors and nurses also know what to look for for sepsis. It is, like I said, rapid. These are kids that are sick and become very sick very, very quick. So getting the proper attention immediately is critical just like with meningitis, and I already talked about that. I'll post below what that um, video was all about. But um, getting attention quickly, getting the labs drawn, maybe a lumbar puncture, uh, all the appropriate x-rays and so forth to rule out some other things. Um, but initiating the things that are important to help that child or adult promptly is what is critical. Antibiotics for one, among many other things. Amputations. The, today's research said that 500 children's limbs are amputated per year in the U.S. because of sepsis. 500 children. 
How about the fact that 3 million children worldwide die every year? That's just outrageous when you think about 3 million and how many, if with prompt treatment, perhaps could have been saved. So if you're a teacher, if you're a neighbor, if you're a babysitter, if you're grandma, parent, these are just things to look for with a child who's very, very sick. I hope that this was informative. Have a good day.